Hi, this is Pedro Alvarez. I would like to share with you a vision of how the National Nanotechnology Initiative can enhance water security. This is very important given the criticality of clean water to global health and economic development. Unfortunately, providing clean water in an affordable and reliable manner is getting harder as the demand increases with the growing population, as water pollution becomes more complex and more difficult to treat, and as climate change with more frequent extreme events, droughts, and even sailing intrusion in coastal areas are exacerbating freshwater scarcity. In particular, there is a growing need for distributed fit-for-purpose treatment as summarized in these feature articles. And important drivers include the fact that we have no choice. There are 43 million Americans in rural areas without access to city water and lots of industries generating wastewater that needs treatment in remote areas. Another driver is to save energy by tapping local, even if unconventional, water sources such as wastewater or seawater. And this way, we would avoid moving uh, treated water over long distances. And this is important because about 20% of the electrical energy used in cities is for moving water. But perhaps more importantly, Distributed modular treatment also gives us the flexibility to match the treated water quality to the intended use, what we call fit-for-purpose treatment. And this is a great opportunity for nanotechnology to enhance the selectivity of the treatment process, to remove target pollutants with greater precision and higher efficiency, while avoiding wastage of treatment capacity on harmless constituents, and this, of course, lowers treatment costs. But also, it allows us to introduce multifunctionality uh, to simultaneously remove different pollutants that need different treatment conditions or functions. And this leads to smaller and more robust treatment systems while minimizing chemical addition and waste streams. And also, it allows us to crack some hard nuts, such as perfluorinated compounds and endocrine disruptors that are too difficult for current technologies to handle. As you know, many engineers' nanomaterials possess unique properties of interest for water treatment. This includes being more reactive on apparatum basis, which is useful for advanced oxidation or advanced reduction processes, having an enormous surface area that makes them excellent absorbents, and quantum effects, uh, essentially that dual behavior between wave and particle. And this allows us to use some materials to use the full electromagnetic spectrum for water treatment. For example, we can enhance the delivery of germicidal UVC using side emitting optical fibers that are decorated with silica nanosphere as scattering centers. And this allows us to disinfect water without adding chemicals that generate harmful byproducts. We can also use UVA and UVB to power selective photocatalytic treatment and use visible sunlight to dry nanophotonic enhanced solar desalination. And we can also harvest infrared radiation in the form of waste heat using nano antenna for localized heating to speed up reactions. We can also use molecular modeling and crystal facet engineering to make surfaces more selective for pollutant removal and exploit the high conductance of some nanomaterials to enhance the energy efficiency and selectivity of both electrosorption and electrocatalytic treatment. We can use super paramagnetism to separate and reuse some magnetic multifunctional nanoparticles in a more cost-efficient way. And finally, we can tune surface hydrophobicity and charge to enhance atmospheric water capture or defouling resistant properties of materials. As an example of treating water contamination with emerging challenging pollutants, using an approach that provides high selectivity without using chemicals, let me illustrate our photocatalytic trap and zap strategy. 
We made photocatalytic titanium dioxide nanosheets with large surface area and assembled them into micron-sized hierarchical spheres that are excited by light to, to generate hydroxyl radicals that destroy organic pollutants. And these are very easy to recover for reuse using low pressure filtration. What is important here is that the microspheres look like flowers, except that these flowers are more like Venus flytraps uh, because they can trap priority pollutants such as bisphenol A. Uh, and uh, this is done by using a cyclodextrin coating near photocatalytic sites for more efficient destruction by the photogenerated reactive oxygen species. This is important because most of the ROS, greater than 95%, are generally scavenged by background constituents in water, and thus they are wasted. But here, uh, they are used as intended due to the proximal absorption of BPA to the photocatalytic sites. And as you can see here, the cyclodextrin coating enhances removal efficiency compared to uncoated flowers, and this lowers also the energy requirements by fivefold, which is significant for reducing treatment costs. Such water treatment applications involving the manipulation of nanomaterial surfaces to enhance selectivity can also be used to develop nanoconjugates that enhance other applications. For example, we can take advantage of the natural trafficking of some proteins called organelle targeting peptides to enable unprecedented subcellular delivery of nanoparticles to specific organelles. And this may allow us, as shown in this example, to target, uh, let's say, mitochondria, which are the red bars, for partial suppression to treat obesity or, or Alzheimer's disease. And Bioconjugates can also help us eradicate biofilms that harbor pathogenic bacteria or that stimulate corrosion. These biofilms are very difficult to eradicate because of limited penetration uh, by chemical disinfectants. And to overcome this limitation, we created what I call magnetic Trojan horses that consist of magnetite nanoparticles with bacteriophages conjugated with them. These phages are virus that exclusively kill bacteria. They're sort of like self-replicating green disinfectants. And the idea is to push the phages with a magnetic uh, field, a weak magnetic field, all the way uh, to reach the root of the biofilm and de-anchor it from the bottom. And after they are done with their job, these nanoparticles can be pulled back for reuse when you reverse the polarity of the magnetic field. Note that the pursuit of higher selectivity through nanotechnology offers great opportunities for molecular modeling of protein nanomaterial interactions, as well as for artificial intelligence to design materials and bioconjugates for tailored reactivity and enhanced selectivity which would also significantly advance material synthesis, characterization, and testing. And as illustrated in the last examples, nanobio interactions are not only providing insights to engineer treatment solutions, but also facilitating the use of nanomaterials to do low temperature heterogeneous catalysis with low concentrations of reactants, and even for advancing fundamental understanding of the rules of life. We have an NSF-sponsored engineering research center called NEWT that is advancing decentralized modular fit-for-purpose treatment using nanotechnology, which we show to be scalable and useful to address challenges that are too difficult for conventional treatment processes. We are proud of the unprecedented use of sunlight to directly desalinate and purify water in a more economical manner, uh, sometimes without relying on electricity. And we're also lowering the entry barrier for catalytic treatment, which is rarely used by conventional processes. And we have used it, for example, to treat uh, the forever chemicals perfluorinated compounds, as well as to control better uh, nitrate reduction all the way to 
harmless nitrogen gas. And our um, contributions include high capacity selective adsorbents and selective photocatalytic treatment through the strategy that I illustrated that we call trap and zap. And importantly, we are attracting top scientists from other areas to focus on water security and help us elucidate how nanomaterials shape and facet affect reactivity and stability. And we're also recruiting a variety of industrial stakeholders from startups to Fortune 500 companies to accelerate innovation as well as commercialization of our inventions. And I would like you to invite you to visit our website, newcenter.org to learn more about these activities. But I want to end by sharing some lessons that I learned while we were building NEWT, which might be relevant to the revitalization and resurgence of the National Nanotechnology Initiative. The first point I want to make is that leadership is taken, not given. So we need to promote uh, natural leaders. And um, uh, of course, um, each NNI domain should have a vision that is compelling for both intellectual and practical reasons. And this is the main magnet that attracts talent and the main glue that keeps it together. Uh, I would advocate the use of the NABC value creation approach as a guide to accelerate innovation. This involves identifying a clear need rather than trying to find a problem for your solution. Adoptive uh, adopting a distinctive approach that is based on sound science, ensuring that the benefits exceed the cost, and benchmarking against the competition, competing alternatives. That's what the C stands for. Of course, we need five things to enhance synergism and collective impact, and that includes having a common agenda, shared measurements, mutually reinforcing activities, and continuous communication and a backbone organization. And finally, uh, I would advocate for the establishment of multi-institutional science and technology hubs that serve as a platform for sustainable innovation ecosystems in collaboration with industry. Thank you very much for your attention.